Hello Year 5, welcome back to Chapter 16 of The Day I Fell Into a Fairy Tale. Harrison looked up at Lana. Brave Briar Rose was drowning, and poor Hansel and Gretel were in the clutches of the witch. I know the story of Hansel and Gretel, said Lana gravely. Mum told me about it. What happens? The witch wants to eat them. Harrison nodded slowly. And does she? I don't know, but Briar Rose is in danger, and so are Hansel and Gretel. Lana took a deep breath. We have to go back through the portal and save them. Without a sound, Lana stole back to her room and began to get dressed, knowing that Harrison was doing the same. Then she picked up the prince's hunting horn and slung it round her neck. So what's our plan? ventured Harrison as they stole across the supermarket car, car park. The air was cold and damp, and up ahead of them, Grimms was wreathed in mist. Simple, Lana replied, holding up the horn. We go back into the story and blow on this. Then the prince will come and save them. Right, said Harrison, not entirely convinced. What if he doesn't hear it? He'll hear it, replied Lana confidently. She rattled the glass doors. They were firmly locked. But what if he doesn't? Suddenly, two giant beams of light sprang from the darkness and swept across the car park. A lorry was approaching. Quick, rasped Lana. This way. Let's try the back. Crouching low, she raced along the front of the store and turned the corner, but the back of the store was protected by a high fence topped with coils of barbed wire. Over there, hissed Harrison. Look, a gap! Two of the metal fence posts were dented, creating a space that was just wide enough to squeeze through. At last, it was for La oh, Sorry, at least it was for Lana. When Harrison came to try, however, he found he wouldn't fit. Ahead of them, the lights of a lorry arced across the loading bay. What now? squeaked Lana. The lever principle, exclaimed Harrison, pointing to a pile of rusting iron work on Lana's side of the fence. Pass me that pole. You guys know the lever, the lever principle, if you think back to our science lessons. I can't lift that, it's too heavy. Then drag it. As quickly as she could, Lana dragged the pole to the gap in the fence, and Harrison pulled it through. On the other side of the bay, the lorry paused by a security gate. Summoning all his strength, Harrison lifted the pole like a weightlifter, wedged one end into the gap and pushed. For a few seconds, nothing happened. Then, there was a buckling sound and the gap widened. Give me a lever long enough, whispered Harrison, as he joined Lana on the other side, and I will move the world. Lana looked at him in a way that said, I have no idea what you are talking about. Archimedes, explained Harrison. Now she remembered. He'd been studying Archimedes when he wouldn't come and play. Lana felt a twinge of guilt. Maybe she'd been wrong to feel so upset with Harrison for studying so hard. She was about to tell him just that when the lorry revved its engine and trundled through the open security gate into the compound. With an impossibly loud hiss of its brakes, the lorry jolted to a halt and a familiar figure vaulted down from the cabin. The little old man threw open the loading bay doors and switched on the lights. This time, he was dressed as a lorry driver, with maroon dungarees, a cap, and a purple goatee beard. With the loading bay doors open, he trotted back to the cabin, hauled himself up into the driver's seat, and started the engine. Come on, urged Harrison, now's our chance to get inside. They began to run as the lorry started reversing with a loud beep, beep, beep. Scouting around the vehicle, Harrison and Lana rushed inside just before the lorry entered. To begin with, all they could see was a yellow forklift truck and low tower after tower of supermarket goods wrapped in thick plastic and stacked on wooden pallets. They raced behind one of the stacks just as the lorry hissed to a halt and the little old man started to climb down from the cabin again. And there he is, just in his dungarees as the lorry driver now, and his, uh, his goatee. Over there, whispered Harrison, spotting a door. Seconds later, they were on the other side, struggling to catch their breath. They found themselves in a long corridor with purple walls. There were lots of gold doors leading off it. Harrison tried one, a toilet. He tried another, a broom cupboard. Then Lana tried the next, phew, the shop floor. They silently rang to the pick and mix section. How do we know which tub to go through, asked Harrison. Good point, said Lana. We need a copy of the timetable. Wait here. A few moments later, she returned. Got it, she said triumphantly. He keeps one at customer service, remember? Right. Sleeping beauty, sleeping beauty, sleeping beauty. Wedding? No. The witch and the little bird. 
No. Got it. Briar Rose in the river. Let's see. It's Friday. Saturday, corrected Harrison, at 3.30am. Saturday at 3.30am, repeated Lana. So we need to travel through the... She frowned as she scanned the long list of times and sweets. Mint Imperials! And saying that, she threw back the lid of the Mint Imperials tub, ready for their next adventure. And they're off into the story again. Right, join me tomorrow for chapter 17 of the day I fell into a fairy tale. Bye, you five!